Hello group. Today I'm going to uh, show you guys what my LHDR technique does to the histogram. And then I'm going to take one of these images and I'm going to stretch it to show you the kind of data that's in these images even though they're they're on the darker side. And the reason I do this is that you can't get data back from an overexposed or a hot uh, saturated pixel. Just no way. <laughs> but if it's underexposed, you could pull it out. So I'm going to take, uh, I have three images from uh, my other night's tutorial. And uh, the first one here is a stack of 32 images. And you can see the histograms looking pretty good. I haven't done anything yet to the image. I had a little bit of drift. That's this line right here. We're not going to really worry about that. Won't affect what we're doing. The next image is a 40. And then the next is the 52 right here. So I'm just going to click through these, and I want you to, to pay attention to the histogram. And what you're going to see is that as the uh, white starts to uh, work itself into this image, the histogram starts to stretch just a tiny little bit, and that's good. That's, what, that's kind of what we want. We want to stretch out that histogram. And I'm doing this with uh, that white move. So I'm going to go to the 40, and you can see what the histogram did. It stretched out. Beautiful. And we also got a lot more details into the image. Now I'm going to go to the 52, and you can see that it stretched out again. And we got a little more detail out of it. We didn't hurt this thing that much. I'll go back to the beginning, pay attention to this, and I'll go back to the to 32. And you can see that it, it uh, dimmed up a little bit. Or it, 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 uh, the white isn't as prominent in this area as it is in the 52 stack. We're just right on the edge of losing this guy. Which is why I kind of like to stick at 32. 32, there's still enough data in here that I can pull it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a layer. And uh, before I make that layer, I just want to emphasize again that there was a lot of haze, high haze from the, the humidity from that night. And I think I mentioned in the tutorial that... Uh, the video tutorial that I had a hard time even tracking with the guide scope because the there was so much haze that I, I couldn't really even find a star to, to guide on. So a lot of this white that you're seeing in the image is from the haze. And we can do some, kind of something about that. Uh, so I'm going to make a layer, duplicate it. Then I'll call this first layer levels. And I'm going to go to adjustment level. I'm going to pick my gray. And I'm going to try... And there we go. That might be a little too much. There, that's better. It's still a little purple for me. We'll stay here. So I'm not going to move the black in to about eight and I'm going to move the white point to maybe 230 and if you notice that didn't hurt this at all so I'll turn it off I'll turn it back on, turn it off, turn it back on. And you can see my histogram is stretching out nicely. So now I'm going to make another duplicate, and I'll call this one Curves. 
And one thing that uh, from my first video that I did, when I uh, started pushing things, my stars got bigger, and I think I figured out why that's the case, and that would it it was the result of the curve that I was using to uh, pull some data out of the image. So let's go to image adjust curve. I'll just move this over a little bit. And what I was doing was making a little S curve. So I want you to pay attention to these stars right in here. And as I pull this curve up, you can see the stars are getting a little bit fatter. And we don't want that. So I have changed my curve just a tickle. And I've done something along these lines. And my stars haven't gotten any bigger, but I'm pulling some data out of here that was in the image that is now starting to, to come out. So I'm, I'm good with this. And I'll turn it off, and I want you to pay attention to these stars right in here. In fact, let me zoom in a little bit. And I'll turn it off, and I'll turn it back on. And you'll notice that my stars didn't grow. That is so freaking awesome. <laughs> the stuff you learn by playing. So I'll back out of the image again. And I'm going to make another duplicate. I'm going to call this Levels again. And I'm just going to do a real light level adjust. I don't even think I need to pick a gray point, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, I don't like that. So I'm not going to do the gray. I'm just going to pull this in about four on the black point and I'm going to move the white point a little bit more Two twenty is probably good for me and you can see um, I'll turn these off so this is the original image here, and this is after a couple levels and a curve. And you can see that this guy is really starting to look good right in here. I'm pulling all kinds of detail out that was there, but because it was on the darker side, I'm stretching the image to bring it back out. So that's my original histogram right here. And now this is after a level curve and a level. And you can see my how my uh, histogram is starting to widen. And that's, that's a wonderful thing. And I'm just going to take, because that's maybe bothering people will crop this out to get rid of that line and this and when you consider the conditions I had this is this is a freaking gorgeous image <laughs> I haven't even gone to the camera yet so I could go back I I'll make a duplicate called curves again and we'll we could do another curve
That's kind of cool. Let me just zoom in and we'll check this star. I want to make sure that my stars don't blow up. And they got a little bigger, but that I can look with that. Nothing wrong with that. Zoom back out. So now I'm going to make another duplicate. And call this the camera. And what we've really started to pull out of this image is the dust. This stuff in here. We're seeing behind the dust. We're seeing on top of the dust. I mean, this is really starting to get pretty. And because I didn't use a dark, I have... Uh, for some reason, with the new soft, when I put the new software on, I had uh, some unexpected noise in my DS10 C Tech imaging that I was able to trace uh, through the help of Rock to my settings. I had to make a new setting, a new preset, I should say, and that got rid of this and the lines. You can see that there's some lines in here. For some reason, every now and then on a load, if, if I remove and uh, do a reload, the settings get screwed up on this camera and this camera only. I don't know why. I think it's a little more touchy with the, with the darks than the other cameras are. And it, I just need to make a new preset, load it, and then uh, it seems to straighten itself out. But even with all of this, I'm still getting a really nice image, I think, anyways. So I'm going to go into the camera raw. And we'll just do an auto, see what we get. And you can see the lines I've got in the hot spot here. But there's still some cool data here to work with. So I'm going to back off on the exposure, bring it down to maybe 30. Uh, I'm going to bring back the whites a little bit to maybe 32. Shadows will stay at 24. The blacks make 40. I'm going to add a little texture, probably up around 16. A little clarity up around 24. And I add the dehaze. I'm going to stick the dehaze right about in there. And what that's done is really started to separate some of the uh, layering that's going on in this core region and then the bands. I can look with this. That really, that really gave the dust some beautiful separation from things. It's almost like it's got its own thing going on. So now I'm going to add some. Now if you hold the Alt key when you're doing this mask, I think I'll stick around 48. 
that's uh, that will determine what gets sharpened based on this mask. And you can see I'm starting to lose this guy down here. That's that's because of that uh, this. Yeah, that's the highlights. Up the luminance to maybe 32. The contrast, 32. And then the color. So I would say this is not a bad image. We've really pushed out the histogram. I've got some beautiful depth going on here. The core isn't just a big glowy blob. This has still got some definition to it. Um, part of the reason that the colors are off would be the haze. And uh, I could probably color correct for that, but that's not really what I'm trying to show how to color correct. Uh, that's for another day, another time. But we really have some beautiful stuff going on in through here. And this from an image, save this, turn this guy off. From this to this. <laughs> Unbelievable. Just gorgeous. So that's my start. This is a 32 frame stack using my uh, LHDR technique. And basically just moving one slider. I set the exposure for this guy because that's going to be the first thing that blows out. I don't really care what the image looks like. If it's dark, the data is there. I'm not doing this for the eye candy on screen. I'm doing this to play in Photoshop. So I go from this image to this image. And it's gorgeous. Even with all the, uh, the other issues I had for the night with the haze. I mean, I could only see primary stars that night, uh, mainly because the stadium lights were still on, the city glow, uh, the upper high haze was all a glow. So, uh, you know, I could barely see the Big Dipper and the Big Dipper was right in the mud. So I kind of like this new Celestron uh, light pollution filter. Uh, first time I've ever used it. Uh, now that I've used it, I, I think I can do better with it. Uh, I have my issues fixed with my DS10. So the next time I shoot the pinwheel, it's my hope that things come out looking even better than this. So I hope you uh, could follow along. If you didn't, let me know. I will try to help. I will zoom into this just so you guys can see the noise. Really isn't that bad. I'm zoomed in approximately 500%. There's some really cool things going on around here. <laughs> Amazing stuff, Rock. Amazing stuff. Okay, group. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the group.